My name is Daniela Gonzalez, and I'm the product market manager for valves and valve terminals for Festa North America. And today with me, my name is Eric Rice. I'm a product market manager for Motion and I.O. for Festo North America. And today we want to introduce to you the new valve terminal for Festo, the VTUX combined with our CPX APA. And um, we have two products here to show a comparison. Yeah, we've got the CPX APA and VTUX on this side. And here we've got the CPX Classic with MPAL valves. So this is our classic portfolio, and this is the valve terminal that's gonna take us to the future. So we have done a couple of new things and changes in the design to make sure that we can optimize this. One of the things that we did is we redesigned the valves. So the valves now allow for more flow in the same footprint, meaning the same valve can flow up to 670 liters per minute without having to change the valve size. What changes is just the sub base size. So for example, here we have two different valve sizes for two different flows. This goes up to 630 with a grid of 14 millimeters. In this case, the valve is still 10 millimeters. The grid is 12.5 millimeters and the flow goes up to 670. So it gives you more flow for just about the same footprint or less. Yeah, and it's just one valve. It's just one valve. So it makes it really easy for you to have valves in stock, keep spares, and then just optimize your machine altogether. Another thing that we did in the change is just the overall size of the valves and the overall size of the manifold was changed. So if we compare them side by side, we can see that we have redesigned the pneumatic interface, so it's much smaller now, so you can have you know a little bit of space here gaining. Also, the end plates are redesigned. So between the saving space on the footprint for the valve subbases and the saving space here, your manifold turns out to be quite compact. If we flip these around, you can also see the comparison of the dimensions this way. You can see the fittings on the new valve manifold. So the VTUX has the fittings all the way flush to the manifold. And on the MPAL and other products that you'll find on the market, the fittings stick out actually quite a bit. So this allows you to have quite a bit of um, you know, space savings here. Now, so much more compact, much more compact. And you know what? It's also very, very lightweight. So, um, you know, all these changes allow us to have a very lightweight product is especially perfect for uh, robot and arm tool applications yeah. and anywhere where you need to improve your payload. Um, what about the safety feature? Yes, so the valves were redesigned. So we have now a negative overlap inside the valves and that will allow us to have some uh, you know some safety features in the future and be compatible with some safety categories. Awesome. So the valves, yeah, that's pretty much on the valves. Awesome. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the electronic side. So one of the things we did with CPX APA is we got rid of the tie rods. So if I flip over the classic here, maybe a little hard to see on the video, but there's two tie rods that run the length of the electronics modules. And on the CPX APA, we got rid of those tie rods and instead we have self-tapping screws that hold the sub bases together. Well, the advantage there is it's much easier to add and remove modules in CPX APA. With CPX Classic, when you add or remove a module, you either have to add an extension to the tie rod or shorten the tie rod. It's just more steps to, or hoops to jump through to yeah. add or remove a module. Yeah. Another thing we did is we got rid of metal sub bases. So on CPX Classic, what we have here are polymer sub bases, but there is a variant that's made of metal. And those are uh, needed for welding applications because um, if we get any weld sparks on there, we need to have something that's flame retardant. Uh, in CPX APA, we actually use a better polymer that has a higher gra uh, graphite uh, composition, and those polymer subbases are flame retardant by themselves, so we don't need the metal anymore. That's pretty interesting. Which is great. And then uh, finally, um, the bus bars. Let's talk about the bus bars inside the subbases. So here we've got uh, two sub uh, subbases, one for CPX Classic, we can see we've got bus bars running all the way to the top. On APA, we just have bus bars at the bottom. Uh, the bus bars at the bottom are for 24 volts, um, but up at the top, we now use connectors for communications. And those connectors are much more robust. They handle higher speed communications, and they're uh, just a much better solution than the bus bars we used to use for communications. Nice. And then the last thing I'd want to say about uh, CPX APA is that it works seamlessly with our other Festo Automation platform products like CPX API decentralized remote I.O. modules. Uh, basically, every bus interface on a CPX APA terminal has an AP port connection, yeah. connect to other APA terminals, 
and CPX API modules. That's pretty interesting. So, you know, as you can see, we've made quite a few changes and this will be the valve terminal that will take us for the next 20 years. And uh, to learn more about this, go to festa.com.